So if we do a quick walk around, I quite like the front end of this. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't shout any particular brand of any kind. The wheels look smart. Uh, they're on Gitty tires. Never heard of those in my life. What size are they? They're 20 inch wheels. The, the side of it kind of looks a bit Mercedes-esque. Got the uh, charge port on the right hand side uh, rather than the front and it's in a fairly pleasing white metallic. I like the back of this and I like the fact that when you uh, open it up the red light does actually kind of uh, come up uh, to kind of go across to Skywell. Boot space wise, already got my bags in the back here. Good size, I mean you'd expect it to be a good size. Storage at the back uh, and at the bottom got the charging lead and tyre compressor and all that malarkey. 12 volt connection, always worth looking for that. And I'm guessing the seats fold down nice and flat. Oh, they're not spring loaded. Doesn't seem to go down that well. Let's just see if this goes down. Doesn't really go down flat. Let's try the other side. Uh, but interior wise, it is really, no, it doesn't really go flat. That's, that's interesting. I mean, the interior, is really nice in the back actually i'm in my wow there is loads of space at the back here i'm in my driving seat and there's look at that there's a good seven eight inches probably a bit more uh in front of my knee i'm six foot with shoes on and um it's comfortable yeah the my my feet aren't too high um lovely pan roof i'm gonna be opening that later because it's blooming hot it is quality um I mean, it's not real leather or anything like that, but you know, the materials feel nice. Yeah, I'm really impressed actually. Let's go and have a look from the driver's seat. Standard door handles, opens nice. Again, um, the interior, I mean, it's not premium, but it's it's nice. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, that's a bit scratchy plast uh, plastic, but this is nice and soft. Uh, the wood is, wood's okay. Okay, so seats wise, I'm sure I have memory from the key, I'm sure. Now, when I first got into this car, I was like, so I've got the key in my hand. I'm used to Tesla Model 3. I was a little bit unsure how to start the thing. Because from here, as you can see, there's no start button, but it's actually just hidden over there. So it's kind of, yeah, it's not that obvious. It took me a little while to find. And then you press it once, Skyworth, even though it's Skywell. Oh, if I press the brake then, and then press the engine start again, then it's ready. In terms of the controls, um, rot rotary dial here, so it says park just up there, and then put your foot on the brake and turn N, S, oh, there's an S, oh, I haven't tried that yet, and D. Oh, camera's massive. To be fair, the screen is pretty big. It's definitely bigger than my uh, Tesla Model 3, so that's impressive. It's got the kind of traditional uh, auto hold for the handbrake, so you can put the handbrake on every time it stops, and traditional handbrake uh, control there. Um, traditional glove box, which is always nice to see. And yeah, we'll see how we get on with the steering wheel controls and the tech when I start driving it, because I'm not gonna read the manual, because I'm a bloke, and we don't do that. But look at this, I mean, massive, that's a lovely big pan roof with blinds. So let's open it up properly. Come on. Hold it down. Yeah, hold it down. Goes back a fair bit. It's comfortable. I'm very particular with my steering wheels and this is unoffensive and I quite like it. Let's swap cameras and see how we get on with the drive. <laughs> So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? That is amazing. Right, I'm gonna give you the first impressions of this car. I've connected my Bluetooth, which was fairly simple. I've got the smart app where you connect your phone to it. Mine's Android. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're just in the car park, just leaving now got some pretty unassuming noise nothing too 
scary. And there is a sport mode that we'll check out in a bit, no doubt. But I just wanna give you my first kind of experience of the car. It feels all right. I've, I've set up the options. Everything's kind of in normal mode. Didn't go sport or anything like that. Maybe play it, play it in terms of the steering and all the rest of it. Oh, I've lost the navigation. There we go. So that's all ready. But yeah, it's, it feels comfortable. Give it some beans. <laughs> Did you hear that? That was the wheels just giving a little bit of ungrip. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I put it on full regen as well. It's not as strong as my Tesla, but I know Teslas are quite strong on the old regen, but I did put it on absolute maximum. I, there aren't any paddles to change that. Again, there's controls on the steering wheel, but it just looks like Bluetooth and cruise control. So we'll have a play with that in a little while, but yeah, seems okay. So this is kind of a pre-UK model. So everything's in kilometers, but yeah, initially, smooth feels nice actually feels all right i'm going completely the wrong way what is this a l walton oh no no okay so that's my sat nav doing something funny let's do a ue that's a good chance to test the wow yep turning circles good you know this is why it's all about the first impressions you see just to give you the first kind of essence of what the vehicle's like to drive okay it's not that reactive when you put your foot down, uh, but I am used to a Tesla report. Um, oh, it likes to, I mean, I just planted it there and it, it scrabbled for grip a little bit again, but the display's really nice and clear. The screen is nice and big, really big. The sat nav with the uh, map from my phone on here, it's not on the dash, but I think that's fairly normal, uh, to be honest. If we get it up to, motorway speeds and see, feel, see what that's like. So it's in kilometers, so we need to be about 120, I guess, for 70 miles an hour. But yeah, I mean, you know, let's give it some into this corner, see what it's like. There's a bit of understeer there. <laughs> I was like, it's not going around the corner. So here we go, onto the A1. The vision's really good. There's loads, loads of glass, so that's all good. Uh, give it some beans again. Let's go. Uh, There's a bit of a delay there. Uh, maybe I should turn it into sport mode. I think we need sport mode. Um, so let's put it into sport mode, see if that makes much difference. We'll only know from a standstill, really. But let me have a little play around with it after my first initial impressions and give you an update once I've done a few miles. So I've been driving it for about an hour. I need to, I don't really need to stop off for a charge, but I want to charge while the traffic's bad and get some food. So perfect timing. I've been driving it and got the cruise control working. There doesn't seem to be any adaptive cruise. I don't know what is on the, the model that's going to come to the UK. Um, the mapping of the the brake pedal on sport and comfort needs a little bit of adjusting, I would say. And the cruise control's like, as soon as you go a little bit faster, it's like, yes, I want to go faster. It's like, oh, okay. In terms of the the ride, the ride seems okay. Um, the There's a little bit of wind noise, but you know, it is essentially a cost effective uh, SUV. And yeah, I mean, it, it drives fine. I haven't really got any any kind of massive negatives about it. It drives okay. Yeah, uh, performance seems all right, actually. Uh, I put it into sport mode. I didn't really see a huge difference, uh, if being completely honest. Um, but I'm gonna charge up. Be interested to see how fast it charges. So I'll show that now um, while it ramps up and then go and get some food. So I was all set to uh, show you the charger, show, show you how fast it was going. I did the uh, tap pin uh, uh, chip and pin on the uh, not even the pin but just the tap and pay that's it on the iron teeth that didn't work then I had to get the app that didn't work and then I couldn't get the plug out of the car because the the car doesn't let it come out I called iron twice they tried to reboot it didn't work and I've been here for two hours it was going pretty well 
Uh, I don't know what to say really, other than, uh, yeah. I mean, just to give some feedback while I've been at the IONTY charger, and I've heard that IONTY is a good charger. It's a fast charger. There's grid serve ones over there, which are 50 kilowatts, which if you want a quick charge, is completely useless, unless your car can only take 50. Um, my Tesla Model 3 can take 250. This, I believe, can take about 100-ish. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I've seen probably, I'd say, 15% of the cars that, EVs that have got to this charging station, there's six, eight chargers here, uh, have had issues. Um, public charging is just not good enough. And simply, you know, cars just don't talk to chargers, DC chargers, well enough, clearly. It just, just buy a Tesla. I can't wait to get back into my Tesla because this is just not good enough. And it's it's really disheartening, really disheartening to be an, you know, an EV advocate, promoting EV, saying like, do you know what, it's a great choice. But again, I'll just keep telling people, you know, Tesla, Tesla charging network, it's so much more valuable than people people realize. It might just be the issues with this car as well, because it's brand new, you know, it's a bit of a pre-production model. But it's a massive, massive negative on a great start of a journey, and I was really excited to drive this car, always excited to drive new cars, whether they're electric or what have you. <laughs> Although I did have a lovely burrito at the uh, Baldock services. So forget your McDonald's and all the rest of it, lovely burrito. And uh, on that bombshell, I think we'll finish. Signing off. Pants. As you could tell, I wasn't in the best of places after being there for so long. But luckily I got rescued by Liam and we found the emergency uh, pull out for the charger uh, plug. And we were on our way, got a charge, it was absolutely fine. And you now join us on the way to Brighton. So I've been driving the Skywell electric SUV for quite a few miles now and I must admit it's really really comfy, um, slightly more road noise I'd say than the Tesla Model 3, um, but now I've got a passenger with me, Dean, who is, Hello. How, how tall are Hello. you Dean? I'm six foot six and so I am in plenty of uh, space and comfort, I think I've got uh, a bag around my feet, is that your bag here Tim? So, but I'm in, but I'm in perfect comfort, nice headroom, nice legroom, and I've got some flex to move around if I need it. So yeah, comfort-wise, uh, it all feels pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it does feel, it is a nice drive, and you know, all the material's really nice. Liam, what space have you got in the back there, and, and how big are you? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm six foot, I've got plenty, plenty of room back here. Even, uh, behind, even behind me. And behind, yeah, Dean, yeah. with his seat fully back, there's plenty of room in the back. Yeah, there's lots of space. And what I noticed was the, the seat floor was actually quite nice and low. Um, but yeah, we're just heading down to Brighton now. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be great because uh, we're going to be showing off the Skywell. Or well, Liam's certainly going to be showing off the Skywell to everyone who's probably not heard of this electric vehicle before. Um, but yeah, uh, Liam, could you give us some insights? Because this is a pre-production model, so there's a few bits that are missing. But what, what's the starting price of this vehicle? And you know, can you give us some headline stats in terms of you know range and battery size? Yeah, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the battery size and the kind of the, the efficiency of it? Okay, so the in terms of the uh, the price, we're looking at uh, this is just going to be one trim level, one specification, uh, which is. You know, I'll, I'll show you the spec. Uh, One size fits all. Exactly, exactly that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we've got little and large here. Um, so, hang on, who's yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's thirty six nine nine five for the seventy two kilowatt hour, and then uh, we're looking at about thirty nine 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 five for the um, for the eighty six kilowatt hour. In terms of efficiency, Dean, you were asking about that. So uh, the 86 kilowatt hour returns 304 miles on the uh, combined uh, uh, WLTP cycle. So you're looking at about uh, 3.4 yeah. uh, miles per kilowatt hour, uh, somewhere around there, 3.4. Uh, so yeah, so you get for, for this size of vehicle, it is uh, that is really good. Um, and then in terms of spe specification, you, it is it comes fully loaded as standard. So you've got. Um, the large 12.8 inch uh, display there. It's a big screen. It is really a big, big screen. Big. And you were, you were mentioned about the reversing camera as well. Yeah, really big. So you got good all round vision, uh, you got a reversing camera there as well. How how fast will it charge? What's the maximum you can put it on? You 
you beat me to it. Are you going to ask that? So this one currently is 80 kilowatts, uh, and we're looking for the production version, hopefully to get that up to around 150 for the Ooh. production version. Yeah. Look at this, nice, nice little Porsche. Uh, 933. Oh, so when I turn it on, it comes up with Skyworth. What's that all about? So Skyworth is a parent company. Um, Skyworth is one of the world's largest uh, consumer electronic brands. Um, they've been going for about 20, 30 years. In fact, actually a bit longer since the 80s. So oh, wow. a well-established consumer electronics brand. And then in 2017, they formed Skywell yeah. as the automotive division. The UK models go into production in August. Um, What's the lead time, like six months? Like uh, no, it's six weeks, okay. between six and eight weeks. So we should get those towards the start of uh, October. And that'll go with the European run, right? So I guess it'll be left hand drive for Europe. Yeah, right absolutely, yeah. So they're all homologated at roughly the same time. Yeah, yeah. So once these start to land, good question. Who is gonna, who is gonna help keep them on the road if there's any issues? Um, so we're looking at uh, developing our dealer network. We're currently up 14 in the UK. Uh, we're looking to expand, expand that to 30 by the end of the year and then 60 by the end of next year. And are, those, are they going to be um, inno all, innovation automotive, so all brands that you Yeah, that's in. it. So they're going to be multi front yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Tim. So we'll just get a closer foot. Seren, isn't it? Is it Seren, DFSK? Uh, Seres, DFSK, yeah. uh, Skywell, and then uh, there's some more on the horizon yeah, as yeah. well. Interesting, interesting times. Yeah. I think that's important. That, 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 that's what the consumers will want for confidence to buy these vehicles. It's like, if anything goes wrong, absolutely. where do I go? That, yeah. is, that is a key factor buying anything that's you know not as established. Bear in mind, this is a pre-production model. Is the, the brake pedal needs mapping a little bit better and also the, acceler uh, the accelerator and the cruise control. But I'm, I'm just nitpicking it. It, it. You know, it drives absolutely fine. Um, and yeah, it seems, seems to be a good option. It'd be interesting to see what the, the monthlies are and the lease rates because generally speaking that's the way that people uh, are buying now. And, that, and that's the other point for fleets. You, you know, you could argue they're even more important to consumers. Yeah. If fleets can't get these supported, they won't touch them. So that's really key. No, ex exactly. So like we're, we're looking at uh, all of our dealers will be IMI level 3 accredited so bit, they'll be able to service this. There'll be certain uh, requirements in terms of like charging facilities at each of the dealers. Yeah. Um, you know that's why that's probably why the recruitment process has been a bit slow because we, we do have high standards when it comes to uh, dealer there is requirements. There's a massive lack of that actually and uh, please visit uh, RHEL Engineering uh, Motor Skills because they offer IMI courses uh, for uh, EV and normal uh, vehicles. Uh, just a little plug there for Ralph and uh, Motor Skills. Thank you so much to the Skywell team for letting me drive that brand new car. Really, really good car. And looks like it's really, really good value. So go and check it out when it comes out. Uh, loads more to come on Chargeheads. Stay tuned and like and subscribe, of course.